Welcome to the second part of Module 13. In this part of the lecture, we will discuss the anatomy of the ears. The ear is the organ of balance and hearing. It is composed of three parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear is composed of the pina and the external auditory meatus. The pina or auricle is the fleshy appendage attached to the side of the skull by muscles and ligaments. It functions to catch and direct sound waves toward the middle ear. The framework of the pina is composed of elastic auricular cartilage, meaning the pina is basically composed of cartilages covered with skin. Let us check some of the parts of the pina. The large, flat, concave internal side of the auricle is generally called scapha. The entire free margin of the auricle is called helix. A fold of skin at the proximal lateral portion of the helix is present and this is called the cutaneous marginal pouch. This transverse fold of cartilage on the concave surface of the pina is called anthelix. In this area, we can see the tragus. This is a thick, blunt, irregularly quadrangular plate of cartilage that projects from the rostral border of entrance to the external auditory meatus. Lateral to the tragus is a thin elongated projection of cartilage called antitragus. The intertragic incisure notch separates the tragus and the antitragus. Also part of the external ear is the external auditory meatus or the ear canal. Let us take a look again in this figure. And here is the ear canal. This serves as the passageway from the pina to the eardrum. Take note that in dogs, there is a vertical canal and a horizontal canal. Now let us move to the middle ear. The middle ear is the part inside the tympanic cavity containing the auditory ossicles and opening to the auditory tube. Here is an enlarged portion of the middle ear showing the tympanic membrane or the eardrum, the ossicles, the tympanic cavity, and the auditory tube. The tympanic membrane is a thin semi-transparent partition between the external auditory meatus and the middle ear. The incoming sound waves vibrate the tympanic membrane and delivers this information to the bony ossicles. The bony or the auditory ossicles are the three bones extending across the middle ear from the eardrum to the oval window of the cochlea. They transmit and amplify vibrations from the eardrum. The ossicles are composed of the malleus or the hammer which connects the inner surface of the tympanic membrane and the incus. The incus or anvil is the ossicle between the malleus and the stapes. The stapes is also known as the smallest bone of the body base fits into the oval window. The auditory or the eustachian tube is the passageway between the middle ear and the nasopharynx. It equalizes the pressure on both sides of the eardrum, thus protecting it from rupture. Swallowing opens the auditory tube allowing air into the middle ear. The inner ear is anatomically divided into three parts. The cochlea, the vestibule, and the semicircular canals. As I recall, the ear is both used by the body for hearing and for balance. Thus, it has structures specific for such function. The cochlea is the snail-shell-like structure and is associated with hearing. It has two channels, the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani. For you to imagine the said structures, here are the enlarged and sectioned schematic illustrations of the cochlea showing the scala vestibuli and the scala tympani. The scala vestibuli is the superior communicating with the vestibule, the middle ear at the oval window, and the scala tympani at the apex of the cochlea. On the other hand, the scala tympani is more inferior and is a continuation of the scala vestibuli from the apex of the cochlea to the round window. The next part of the inner ear is the vestibule. It is the central expanded portion of the inner ear. It is consists of two sacs, the saccule and the utricle. Both these structures contain areas of sensory hair cells known as macula, surrounded by jelly-like material containing calcium carbonate particles or otoliths. 
The main function of this structure is to maintain balance when the animal is standing still. And finally, we have the semicircular canals. These are the three bony canals arising from the vestibule arranged approximately at right angles at each other. Together with the vestibule, the semicircular canal is also part of the inner ear that is responsible for balance. These bony canals are filled with fluid called endolymph. When the animal moves, the fluid inside the semicircular canal moves as well. Each of the canal has an ampulla which is connected to the utricle. And that ends our discussion on the second part of this module, which is the anatomy of the ear. Remember that the ear is divided into outer, middle, and inner ear, and each of them has specific parts unique to them.